साफ करा हुआ है दो बजे तक ना ऐसे मुझे देखो नीलम जी हाय हाय इम्तियाज हाय आशीष हेलो भैया नीलम जी कैसी हैं बिल्कुल ठीक है लॉन्ग टाइम यस आई नो योर फ्रेंड हैज कम सेइंग आशीष ने मुझे यहां भेजा है मैंने कहा खुद तो कभी आया नहीं तुम्हें भेज दिया नहीं नहीं मुझे आप हैं वहां पे तो मुझे पता है क्या है वहां पे अच्छा Just kind of hold on till two. क्योंकि थोड़ा वो टेक्निकल ग्लिचेस वगैरह थोड़ा इश्यू रहता है वैसे भी अभी दस मिनट है बिल्कुल We came because इम्तियाज said भाई one forty forty five minutes भी दे Just to be on the safe side आशीष <laughs> हम 
तुम्हारा ट्रैवल का चल रहा है सोशल मीडिया पास क्या करूँ मैं आपके पास तुम्हें दे दू कुछ करती है कि Then I was also thinking something else. करते हैं इसके बाद डिस्कस एक बार। ना मोल भी नहीं है। कुछ भी कुछ बिल्कुल टाइम नहीं मिला है ना। Even हमारे एक और फ्रेंड लाइन है जो काफी नए हैं। चार दिन में। कबू दिन में वाले। Good afternoon all. तो good afternoon. Good afternoon. डेली न्यूज़ के भी अपडेट्स आते हैं सोशल मीडिया में लेकिन उसमें क्या है कि जैसा आपको चाहिए ना वैसे एक स्ट्रक्चर बनाया हमने उसके लिए I hope all of you are uh, comfortable with the format that I had sent to you. Uh, there is a, you know, like Ashish should be showing some photos, and I believe uh, Rajesh has a two minutes video. So, if any of you have any uh, thing that you want to show, you can you can let us know. Otherwise, we'll just proceed with the. Well, otherwise, format is fine with all of you, right? Absolutely. Hi, Brajesh Ji. Hi, good afternoon. <clears throat> good to see you. Thank you. <clears throat> Uh, Dr. Imtiaz, can we have a brief round of introduction among us because we are that, not... Uh... That is a good idea, yeah. yeah. So, start with myself. My, hi, everyone. I'm Imtiaz from Helpage India. So, we will start with Ashish and go around the panel. Uh, so, I'm Ashish, Ashish Gupta. I run uh, Samart, which is a uh, elder care and... Uh, uh, you know, fairly broad in terms of uh, what we do for seniors. We have been doing that for about six years. Uh, we run a community and care program for people in about 110 cities in India. Yeah, in no particular order, I mean, you know, Camilla. Yeah. Hi, it's very good to be with you all today. Um, me, I'm Camilla Williamson, and I'm Healthy Global Healthy Aging Advisor at HealthAge International. Mm -hmm. Um, and I'm based in Spain. I'm very honoured to join this panel. Thanks, Kamala. Brajesh Ji. Yeah, good afternoon all. Uh, I am Brajesh Gupta. I <coughs> work for GMR Valakshmi Foundation. And I'm responsible for uh, foundation activities in Delhi. Uh, other than Delhi, I have uh, <coughs> Chandigarh and uh, Gujarat. So... Uh, uh, we have piloted one daycare center with uh, HelpAge. So, uh, you know, before COVID, we had a lot of ideas to, uh, you know, wanted to explore. Uh, but in between the COVID came and then uh, we are again in the same level where we, you know, pre-COVID level. So uh, not much we could do in that, but still we are you know trying to build on what we have learned in uh, last three four years so that's all and basically we are in uh, vocational training as a foundation uh, in delhi we have uh, uh, mainly we are into vocational training thank you very much. neelam ji thank you hi my name is neelam mohan i run a home called panchvati it's a small home with 40 rooms but it is the first of its kind, short stay assisted living center for senior citizens. I don't think we have any such place in India and I hope soon I'll be able to influence everyone to have more spaces. It's a non-profit organization and uh, HelpAge has been my mentor. 
Rajesh. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Dr. Rajesh, and uh, I'm based at Shimla. I'm working with HelpPage for I think around 18, 19 years, and uh, looking after Himachal and Ladakh two states. All the programs, advocacy, fundraising, everything. Yeah. So I'm just enjoying working with you know elderly actually. For basically, I'm an anthropologist. My background is anthropology, and uh, but I'm just applying my anthropology all theories in this you know working with help is actually. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, all the you Thank know you. Uh, panelists. Yeah. Wonderful. No, I had the privilege of. Uh... Uh, visiting the helpmates, uh, you know, old age home in Ladakh, and I think that's the time. I yes, sir, uh, we had we had talk. I think. Yeah. Uh, yes, yes, and I was very impressed by what I saw there. You know, in a in a place in Ladakh, where created something which is so so connected with the with the local community it was amazing. People were amazing. So, so. Sashi, all that you saw, you know, is all credit to Rajesh and team. Oh no, no, <laughs> it is all teamwork. Yeah. Our master is Imtiaz. You know, <laughs> sitting at Delhi, actually. Again, <laughs> teamwork, Rajesh. Yeah. Biju. Yeah, good afternoon. I'm Biju Matthew, uh, working as uh, state head for uh, HelpAge India in Kerala State. Uh, I've been uh, with HelpAge for the last, uh, in, into my 27th year. For yeah. HK. Sure. Thank you, Biju. Um, we're fortunate to have Mr. Faz also join us. Uh, Mr. Faz is the DC of Jamtara district. Sir, we are um, having a round of introduction. So if you can kindly introduce. Okay, I got delayed somewhere. No problem, sir. Oh. Th th thank you very much for having me. I'm Faz A.Q. Ahmed Mumtaz. I'm the district collector of Jamtara, Jharkhand. Thank you, sir. I'm of 2014 batch. Most welcome, sir. Thank you. We'll just, just give it a couple of more minutes and then we'll start uh, 57. So maybe a couple of more minutes. So we were just discussing for Mr. Faz and others who joined lately on the format. So I think um, all of you are fine with the format. If there are any questions, we can uh, you know, discuss now. First of all, I never got the format in this. No, I sent a mail today morning, ma'am. I don't know if it is... Okay, just for the benefit, I think you... But it doesn't matter. It's okay. Whatever no. format is fine. Yeah, yeah. No, uh, just for the benefit for everyone, uh, we will have uh, a, a initial, uh, you know, deliberation by all of you after I've introduced. So that would be for about around seven to eight minutes, followed by questions from my end. And then if there are some audience questions, we will put that up also. And then we'll move to the next speaker. So that's the format that we'll follow. Uh, you've already been given a brief. So you, I, you know, you would just kind of maybe follow or whatever, you know, for covering those points. And then uh, at the, you know, whenever there is a discussion and something relating to you, I'll again come back at the end of the deliberation of that particular speaker and ask you. Uh, we would hopefully, uh, you know, likely and desire to have a second round of discussion if time permits. But this is the broad format uh, going into round one. So that's the overall structure. So uh, so that's fine. that's what we have planned. Yeah. So ma'am, that's fine uh, by you. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, and Dr. Imtiaj, uh, towards the end, uh, you will be concluding uh, about the discussion and uh, yeah. how this discussion outcomes you will be taking forward. Is there any plan for that? Sure, sir, we'll discuss that also. There is a purpose to this discussion, so I will also kind of be, you know, briefing everyone at the beginning also on oh. why we are getting into <clears throat> such a panel discussion. <clears throat> so just one more minute, and we'll get into the. Okay, we are at two. Um, I think we should start now. And do you think we should start? Give it a couple of more minutes or we can start. I think you should start. Okay, that's Ooh. good. Okay. Yeah. Um, so Namaskar and a very good afternoon to all of you. Um, uh, from HelpAge's end, uh, we extend a very warm welcome to all of you for today's webinar. Uh, my name is Imtiaz and I'm your host and moderator for today's discussion. 
uh, as my point is you know i tend to get a bit philosophical and towards the end of any discussion so i would uh, you know follow that format so uh, the great english poet alfred lord tennyson in his magnums of um, poem ulysses talks about the great greek warrior king and seller ulysses and his dilemma with old age retirement and inaction not only for himself but for his fellow soldiers and sailors the poet goes on to capture this in his poem and i quote a short and an abridged version and i quote how dull it is to pause to make an end to rust unbunished not to shine in use as though to breathe were life life piled on life there lies the port the vessel puffs her sail my mariners free hearts free foreheads you and i are old old age hath yet his honor and his toil death closes all but something before the end some work of noble note may yet be done come my friends it's not too late to seek a newer world though much is taken much abides and though we are not now that strength which in old days moved earth and heaven that which we are we are one equal temper of heroic hearts made weak by time and fate but strong in will to strive to seek to find and not to yield the dilemma and confusion that ulysses faced and his resolve not to yield can be easily identified by many of our seniors in the country who have given many fruitful years of their lives in nation building and were looking forward to a rested retired life now that they are retired they are struggling and striving to find a way for meaningful engagement whereby financial earning is not the main aim but the objective is to be fruitfully engaged where they can participate positively contribute and feel valued the covid-19 pandemic it also had a detrimental effect on the mental health of the elderly for the deepening and making such needs more acute help age india survey in both the waves of the pandemic showed that 57% of the elderly were waiting for someone to just call them to talk many of them felt trapped and frustrated 42% elders were most worried of being hospitalized and 79% elders felt that their family doesn't spend enough time with them in such a scenario the multi activity day care centers are gaining much popularity with increasing demand from the elderly the objective and scope of such centers varies from purely recreational to engagement select activities and to assistive care physio dementia etc also at the policy level intent and articulations are very much there for such day care centers centers the maintenance act for senior citizens national action plan for senior citizen and through the health and wellness center under the ayushman bharat while the need is clearly spelled out and policy intent is clear the scale up of such a center and a concept is much lagging behind leaving a lot to be desired such a scenario arises as there is no clarity on the model scalability and sustainability aspects of the day care center for the elderly to discuss the various challenges best practices learning and future road map of such centers in the country help in india is convening this webinar where practitioners and experts of eminence from national and international arena in the field of geriatric care senior living policy makers and donors are brought together today we have a very exciting and vastly diverse panel today with experts and their work in the elderly day care center space ranging from interventions in the international space to path breaking innovation from a remote district in jharkhand to innovation for the urban elderly with customized approach based on their need to implementation of the intervention with state level government departments and the overall take and perspective of csr donor on such an intervention without further ado i'd like to invite camelia for the first deliberation camelia represent helpage international and has carried out quite a few experiment in asia and other lmic countries camelia has worked in the aging sector for now 10 years with a masters degree in aging from kings college london and has been consulting internationally and nationally on various multilateral and bilateral agency she has particular experience in health and social care national agency policy development camelia has been working on a project on good practice in day care centers for older people in low and middle income countries um, camelia over to you for the first deliberation thank you so much i'm very honored to be on this um, panel and um, and excited as well to hear about the experience of of those on the panel um it's it was great to hear the introductions of, of you all and i'm really excited to yeah learn more about the work you're doing in different um areas um you asked me to particularly talk about um the the model of old people's associations and also um good practice around programs and centers for older people in in asia and i think um i wanted to start by 
just stressing that I'm sure people all know, but it's important to remind ourselves um, that it's really about thinking about the goal of healthy aging, um, which is defined, um, as many know, as functional ability um, that enables us to continue to do what matters to us as we age. So it's not about the presence or absence of disease or disability, but really about being and doing what we value in accordance with our human rights. And I think in terms of um, long-term care and support, but also in terms of um, center, you know, older, older people's uh, daycare centers, that really means thinking about multidisciplinary approaches, which meet older people's holistic needs and take an empowerment-based approach. And I wanted to start with sharing a little about Health Ages' experience with older people's associations, um, particularly in the region, as I believe that the approach aligns closely with how we need to conceptualize centers for older people. Um, and as I'm sure many know, the Health Age um, network um, across the region, but internationally as well, have been working with older people's associations for many years. And these are community-based organizations that focus on mobilizing older people to improve their own lives and also to contribute to the development of their communities um, and across many domains. And although the model is adapted to specific country contexts and will be different um, in India as it is in other countries, the um, OPA model that Help Age has worked with has certain core traits. Um, so firstly, they really seek to engage and empower older people. And that also includes leadership roles and steering the activities that they do, as well as aiming to engage older people who might be more at risk of being left behind. So um, older women, older people with disabilities, older people from lower socioeconomic groups. And they're also multifunctional. So um, they do a range of activities to make sure that they're relevant to the lives of uh, the members of the older people's associations and to address the interrelated needs of older people. So that includes looking at livelihoods and support for work in later life, um, health and home-based care and support, as well as social connection, um, training um, and practice around rights and entitlements, disaster preparedness um, and women's participation. And a really critical element, I think, uh, is the intergenerational aspect. Many of them are intergenerational, which ensures that they're relevant to the community, but also create really strong bonds and broad links um, and also a wider support base, so for volunteers, for technical support, and for the diverse skills. They also um, draw upon the community's existing resources, and that includes the capacities of older people themselves to serve as agents of change in their lives and communities. They're absolutely not about doing things for older people, they're doing things with older people and older people really leave, leading that activity. Um, and one of, I, one of the ways that I think that they create the most effective change is the way that they seek to strengthen links for older people at the community level with local service providers, local government, um, and really working on that demand and supply side accountability. And it's really important in terms of care and support, particularly because of that demand generation. And we know that um, in many places, people are reticent for non-family to provide anything other than healthcare. Um, as they view all care and support potentially as the role of the family. And that normally means women and, and girls. So I think that these key features um, are really key to carry over and to think about when we're exploring the role of um, older people's daycare centers. Where they work best, we know that they're multidimensional, multi-sectoral, and that they really promote that holistic um, approach to healthy aging and health and care. Um, including in terms of older people's right to health, to social security, independence and participation. And the other thing they do um, is promote the needs and rights of caregivers. And we know that caregivers, family, friends, neighbours play a really critical role in supporting healthy ageing. So thinking about this and thinking about um, the, the way that you need to engage all different stakeholders to be able to do this effectively, um, the type and range of activities that you can see in, in daycare centers where they work very well is a single point of access um, to multi-purpose services for older people, but also their family. Um, doing that holistic needs assessment, and goal, joint goal setting, activity planning, but also providing care navigation um, to support integration and monitoring. Absolutely a huge role for self-care promotion, 
um, and health and healthy aging education and information and awareness raising, as well as health promotion, and disease and disability prevention, um, rehabilitation, the, the key role of short-term daily caregiver respite. And in some places they have overnight um, accommodation as well so that they can provide um, respite care to caregivers. Um, but then also the, the dining and that social aspect, caregiver training and information, doing the broader advocacy and information and support to access and demand services, uh, assistive equipment, um, assistive technology and home care. Um, and then also those social and recreational activities. So um, championing, befriending, volunteering models, um, organized intergenerational activity. And I know something that was talked about a lot in your webinar last year on Bridging the Gap was digital technology and that digital skills be building for older people themselves, but also actually for the center to be able to, to reach out. And transport is, is really key to think, thinking um, about that. So I think where, where you, become these centers have become this kind of community hubs and one-stop shops for, for national, provincial, local services. Um, they've been really, really um, important. Um, just to, to close, I, I want to just highlight a couple of things that I think are kind of learning from, from our work on all the people's uh, associations, but also from looking at good practice on daycare centers more broadly. And that's about inclusion and accessibility. Um, how do we effectively reach everyone? It can't just be about the physical space of the center. Um, we really need to be thinking about reaching the furthest behind first. Um, how do we get to those who, who might not be able to reach the center, who are more remote um, communities, um, people with disabilities um, or poorer communities? And that integration here and, and that really key role of home-based support is one of the first, first goals of, of long-term care and support. And I think if there's a risk that if they fail to really um, do this, then they won't have the impact on the groups that we're most, most wanting to reach. Um, and the other um, risk, I think, is relying too heavily on volunteers. Volunteers can add absolutely um, great value, um, including older people, um, older volunteers, but they're not enough. And for sustainability, we really need to be looking at those multi-sectoral approaches. Um, and I think agreeing that the ultimate goal really needs to be inclusive, people-centred and universal public health and long-term care and support systems, um, because this is really what's key to ensuring success and sustainability and meeting that wide range of needs and ensuring an adequate workforce, um, which is critical for older people, their caregivers, uh, and also including um, gender, gender equality within care provision. So I'll stop there. Um, but I'm, I'm really excited to, to join in debates around other issues too and share some of our experience uh, and hear from others. Thank you. Thank you, Camilla. I mean, very interesting uh, deliberation on your experience, you know. You know, some other thing, you know, I was noting down, very fascinating, you know, the multidisciplinary approach and the empowerment approach on the rights and entitlement. I think, you know, and, and in terms of the volunteer and people-centered, I think what has fascinated us always, you know, um, in, in India, and especially if, uh, for me as a professional working with uh, in the aging sector, is the sheer ability of, uh, you know, um, of Asian countries, you know, the Thail, you know, I've seen, I've read about the experiments in Thailand, in Vietnam, where, you know, HelpAge International has also worked. Uh, I have no question, which is in two folds. The first thing is, I mean, they have a culture, you know, from my reading, I understand that they have a culture which is centered around the Buddhist religion and their, you know, overall ethos of, you know, service to the community. Uh, so that is where, you know, you see long-term care, home care, daycare centers, really, you know, you know striking root. Uh, so how do you, you know, kind of propose it in a nation which may not have, you know, uh, a very strong, uh, you know, uh, in, like the Buddhist, uh, you know, tradition of service that is one. The other thing is, you know, uh, for example, long-term care, and you know, when I look at the uh, Vietnam and Thailand and Asian country experience, a lot of it has become part of the policy with the, with the, with the national government, where, you know, in Thailand we visited and we were very fascinated to see that it is part of their health policy, you know, in terms of the home care. And they had actually a team which is attached to their health center, which is providing home care to the elderly and others as part of their national policy. You know, there is a health financing happening. It's part of their health budget. So A, first, you know, how do you do it in a setting where, you know, you know service 
uh, is may not be the central theme around a religious religious cultural uh, thing and be the part where the advocacy is being effectively done to make it part of it so i'd like you to share your experience yeah thank you it's a really important question i think um and I, again i love we'll love to hear from others about this but um i think what's been a lesson from um the asia region in terms of all the people's associations is that multidisciplinary approach and offering um somewhere that isn't it's not seen as something that's just a, a daycare center for people with very high needs um it's for everybody and it's a community based approach that meets a range of needs so that you're not just um to, you know people don't associate it just with one one domain and then you start getting the buy in i think if people see it as a social hub as somewhere that they can go that will connect them with younger groups that is also instrumental in terms of you know maybe digital literacy and empowerment but also um general well-being maybe also thinking about that livelihood element as well then when you're providing care and support or up to people with a high level of need um they're integrated and i think that that's a really key way of um of building support um for for the idea but then also um that demand and supply side accountability making linkages with government um and creating spaces for older people to come together with service providers um is really important for for improving both the demand side um but also the supply side so that they can really get on the same page about what's important and then those groups you know if there's if there's many of them across the country a lot of you know in some countries they're coming together and being national organizations to advocacy um and making sure that their voice is heard in policy processes but from from a policy level one of the things that i think's key is everyone getting on the same page you know from health pages experience working on um in places where there aren't long term care and support policies in place getting all the stakeholders including all the people people with disabilities their caregivers um but all the different service providers into a room for you know 3 days and really hammering out what is it that we mean by care and support what do we want to be the goal um because i think until you have everybody on the same page it's really difficult to move forward um so yeah those would be some some reflections on that thing <laughs> Thank you, Camilla. That's been very useful in, in terms of the insight that you've offered. Uh, we would come back to you during the discussion on certain some of the cross-cutting themes. Uh, so, just taking the discussion forward in terms of the community involvement and their participation, we're very fortunate to have Mr. Faz A. Q. Montas, the Deputy Commissioner of Jantara, Jharkhand, here with us. now for many of you ott viewers and uh, and netflix watchers jantara is not the only thing about fighting and okay. uh, uh, financial fraud but it is much more than that uh, which mr faz ak mumtaz has clearly demonstrated in his district uh, he has done a very innovative experiment where he has taken up uh, you know dilapidated buildings old buildings which were unused and he has renovated it into elderly club where elderly can come in the day time and spend time and you know uh, recreation socialization the need for engagement is fulfilled there a uh, very innovative experiment has been in the news for this for quite some time uh, we are really fortunate to have him here uh, before uh, mr faz comes in with his deliberation we have a short video which we want to run on this interventions at jamtara um the request vishnu to run the video for us to ye bataiye ki iske khulne se fayda kya hua hai are yahi wo sir jo hum log ghar mein baith kar ke hum log ka koi kaam nahi tha soye hue rehte the har samay chintit rehte the lekin yahan aane ke baad baat chit karte hain share karte hain to thoda sa utsah aata hai
आते हैं सर साढ़े दस दस बजे तक हम आ जाते हैं सर कलम खोल देते हैं सर हमारे इतना सहयोगी लोग सर एक एक करके आने लगते हैं सर सब बैठ के साथ हम लोग कुछ समय गुजारते हैं सर कुछ इंजॉय करते हैं सर कुछ पुरानी बातों को याद करते हैं सर कुछ सुनाते हैं कुछ सुनते हैं सर और जब सुनते हैं सर आपस में सुनाने और सुनाने के बाद जो बातें निकलती है सर उससे कुछ सोचते हैं कि हम कहाँ थे और आज हम कहाँ आ गए यहाँ पर है कि ये लोग जैसे बुजुर्ग लोग आते हैं हाँ, हाँ, तो अपना अगल बगल में लोग देखते हैं कुछ विडो पेंशन की मामला था हाँ, हाँ, या कुछ वृद्धा पेंशन का जिनको नहीं मिल रहा था जी, तो इन, इन लोगों ने हमको संज्ञान में दिया और हाँ, उसका हम लोगों ने सेंशन भी किया अच्छा आज वो लोगों को मिल रहा है पेंशन तो मतलब एक एक इंटरफेस हो गया मतलब एक एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन और जो आदमी कॉमन लोग हैं उनसे एक मतलब आपसे डायरेक्ट एक्सेस हो गया मतलब आप कभी आ जाते होंगे इधर तो फटाफट आप से कोई प्रॉब्लम होगा तो बोल देते होंगे ये लोग हम चाहते हैं कि इस तरह के किसी तरह का मन आपस में मन मुटाओ है ना ऊंच नीच जाति बात जाति बात यहाँ ना हो ना होगा हाँ इसी चीज में हम लोग चर्चा करते हैं ये हिंदू है मुसलमान है उस तरह की बातें हम लोग यहाँ आने नहीं देंगे न भविष्य में आएगा तो ये बताइए की इसके खुलने से फायदा क्या हुआ है बैठ करके हम लोग का कोई काम नहीं था सोए हुए रहते थे हर समय चिंतित रहते थे लेकिन यहाँ आने के बाद बातचीत करते हैं शेयर करते हैं तो थोड़ा सा उत्साह आता है और सबसे बड़का बात है कि यहाँ आते तो दिमाग थोड़ा जो है सो खुशहाल होता है मैंने इंजॉयमेंट आता है मनोरंजन का एक साधन हो गया है लोग खुशहाल मूड में यहाँ आने के बाद लोग खुशहाल मूड में रहते हैं इसके यहाँ जाके बैठे हाँ क्या कहा टाइम कैसे बच्चा बुढ़ा से भेजना हाँ हाँ युवा लोग अपना ग्रुप में रहता है युवा आपसे बात करना नहीं चाहे हाँ बच्चा लोग भेजना नहीं चाहे हाँ ऐसी स्थिति में आप बुजुर्गो कहाँ खोजिए हाँ संगठित कहाँ होगा लोग करेक्ट हाँ कहाँ इकट्ठा होगा हाँ किसी के घर तो हरदम आप आ जा नहीं सकते है हाँ तो संगठित होने मैंने समूह को एक जगह इकट्ठा करने का एक माध्यम माध्यम हो गया थैंक यू विष्णु तो ये बताइए कि इस का नाम शेयर थैंक यू I mean, what a great example of bringing the community together for a shared cause, and a, it's really fascinating, sir. We are all ears for you to come and give your deliberation and uh, share your experience. Over to you, Mr. Faz. Thank you. Thank you for having me here. Uh, this is actually a very basic concept, uh, though you know those little interventions which can really make difference in a uh, people's life is something like that. So the whole idea was conceived. after uh, covid second phase when you know everything was difficult for everyone so i met a few elders who were like health physically they were healthy i mean uh, nothing nothing wrong uh, in terms of health but they were like i found them they were depressed very sad and they were like simply waiting for their death like you know when will our life be over something like that because they had lost maybe their spouses or some children or someone so i thought you know he you know these people they don't need anything they just need someone to talk to and then i planned this concept of elders club where we renovated one uh, dilapidated building in each block and then we called on uh, the factories and the businesses and the civilians to con- contribute in whatever way they can and they all came forward so uh, we built this clubs with Uh, you know all kind of indoor games religious and secular books television refrigerators and etc and also using government resources we uh, built a park around these clubs so that they can you know go out for exercises and morning walk and after that we have made uh, committees from among the members so there is a management and maintenance committee which has a treasurer and a, a president and they are all members of this club and they are supposed to you know run the club Now, other than that uh, the block development officer has been made nodal officer to overall have for hand hold holding these people and the club uh, 
and then we have also made many sub committees also so that everyone you know all the members uh, have some role in the management also and they feel they have some sense of ownership and they feel part of it but actually the concept is that every uh, person who is above 60 years in the block is a suo moto member of the club so actually generally what we see we are seeing is that uh, those who are living nearby they are like they are visiting every day but uh, from the remoter areas whenever they come to the block office for some work or for some marketing or shopping so they also turn up at these clubs so um, now we see and these people when we talk to them they are very happy they are making new friends like people whom they had seen before or they knew existed but they were never talking to them now finally they are all sitting and uh, literally chilling there and they are making friends and they are celebrating all the religious festivals and any other kind of social function they celebrate even they even celebrate their birthdays here and uh, it's a very lively environment that is there in these clubs and um, and and as as you have seen in the video also and you'll see in the reports also it's a very a positive environment that is building here and we have introduced a concept recently only that uh, primary school children you know every month and they take a visit to these clubs the local school and uh, you know they are they have a holiday kind of thing and where you know these elders they talk to them they you know sing with them they play games with them so you know our children can also gain from the wisdom of these senior citizens and vice versa the senior citizens also can you know spend some quality time with them you know the the regular uh, complaints which we have which we or which we all come through in our lives from the senior citizens is that you know they don't have people to talk to or communicate with you now children also uh, having nuclear families you know so there are not many people actually and when they come back after school they're all busy in their internet and uh, phones so you know these people are actually left alone even in even if they have good wealthy uh, family good health even then they are like you know left alone kind of at home so this this is the club, club the concept of this club is basically just you go you know spend time with people of your own age and talk about your childhood enjoy play games and they're all having fun very nice thank you very much sir i think um, an wonderful example uh, of having the district administration step in and having that will to really make yeah, us changes at a at a ground level yes sir and it, so we have every month we are having a targeted health checkup camp also here which wow. is the, totally for the elders only and other than that we have every month uh, the subdivisional officer visiting each club where we sort out only family related issues so there are at least four or five cases where children were you know Uh, not treating their parents well so those issues we use that maintenance of parents a senior citizen act to enforce it and uh, give them their so at least four or five such cases have been sort uh, sorted out in the last one year and uh, those health camps are also there and volunteers have been attached to each of these clubs so you know every week you know or twice a week they go there and uh, teach yoga and exercises also to these elders that's really great sir so uh... uh just wanted to ask you in terms of running of these centers uh, how uh, how are you looking at the sustainability aspect in terms of the financial sustainability and the upkeep of the center yeah that is a very we were actually initially hand holding them but at least three of our six clubs have become uh, self sufficient and some of them are even running in surplus budget so the, what they have done is in the parks because these clubs are somewhere around the block office the district uh, the block headquarter so uh, you know two of the clubs have made a cycle stand in their park so where people who visit them uh, they park their cycle and these elders because there are many of them so they take turns to look after that area so they are charging 5 rupees for the cycles and they have uh, had so much uh, surplus that they are now having running a, a functional kit and every day you know at least 10 or 15 uh, people are eating also out there then there's another club which is in a big basti so what they do is whenever there is a marriage they lend out that space so we have built that uh, it's a nice beautiful place so what they do in marriages they lend out the space and they get money uh, you know because there was no uh, this shaadi bhavan or something out there so even they have surplus budget for running their uh, thing so what we are planning that we'll make all these clubs self sustaining in that way only the cycle uh, con- cycle stand concept was very uh, very you know very little uh, effort is needed and uh, you know they can have a good 
uh, regular income for the club for that so i think it should work and because the clubs have been handed over to the members only we we don't have except for um a little you know hand holding it's mostly them who have to run it so because the the beneficiaries have that owners of running it so i'm sure they can run it properly sure so sir uh, you you've been you've been a trailblazer you know path breaker in a sort in this space and uh, we've been talking a lot from a policy point of view that there are provision under the maintenance act uh, and that there is national action plan for senior citizen which has put a put a you know separate budget and structure to it but nothing much is you know kind of there is no much of a movement happening uh, on the ground so if i were to pose this question to you sir uh, in terms of how do you see this being put up on a law, you know in at a national level of saying you know let's scale this up what would be a more sustainable way to scale this up what are the channels that you we can for example rajesh is here biju is here many of our state heads are also attending what can we do at a state level be able to rapidly scale up this model especially in the rural area so this is as, like you saw in the video and as i explained this is a very simple concept but yet you know the impact is huge there's nothing much to do see every uh, even every panchayat for, even if we leave block even at the panchayat level you will always find some building that is government building that is not being used that is dilapidated you know trees and plants have grown around it you know so i mean uh, because the whole concept is for the public only so i am i'm sure um, we can save a lot on the part of structure you know? and uh, as you saw you know little intervention just the space sofa tv and uh, indoor games these don't cost much and you know the local businesses can contribute even the officials can contribute you know as like crowd sourcing has a huge effect if one person has to do it it is big budget but when everyone comes in small contributions can also help like helpage has been doing for a long time i think you work on con- uh, this you know uh, this concept only and uh, Uh, what uh, what i was thinking is like you know when you give the management to the people who are supposed to benefit and maybe you know uh, we can think of you know uh, forming a society or registering in some way or the other to get some corpus to make it uh, you know uh, to have some budget for a functioning i'm sure it can work out and because you are expert see this is for me it's not like something which was first planned and then implemented it was like you know it was like we kept on improving we will something and then you know came to know you know as we kar sakte hain or do we can do something else also and then we kept adding and we are just improving so it's not like uh, you know, some concept note has been prepared and then we have done it just started and then we kept on improving so i'm sure actually i i, I joined this uh, meeting also to learn from you <laughs> Uh, we have you no know, sir we have a lot to learn from you in terms of what you are doing phenomenal work sir i think uh, this hats off to you for having that uh, will in actually you know seeing it through and you know ensuring that it's all scaled up to all the talukas now if i am correct and all the five talukas it has been scaled up thank you very thank much you. Uh, we'll come back to you uh, when we have a related and overlapping question uh, your concept of uh, of uh, having Uh, such a daycare center at a rural area owned by the community is something which you know rings some resonance with something that we are doing in kerala uh, so beju is here from kerala our state head so under the age friendly kerala initiative uh, what the government has done is through the municipality corporation through the panchayats they are having this uh, you know elderly daycare centers which is known as the sayam prava centers and you know in that the elderly come they spend the whole day actually you know if uh, centers in antikara and chulikal they spend the day there is killing they they build small items uh, we provide them a food the, so the case of nutrition is also taken care um, it's it's a bee beehive and bee buzz of activity out there in the center uh, so biju over to you uh, for you to share uh, this exciting experience yeah good evening to all uh, distinguished uh, panelists uh, i will uh, show a small ppt through that i will uh, go through because otherwise you know the ideas won't flow in a much uh, structured manner so i would request uh, vishnu to allow me to share 
you have the access. Is it visible now? Yes, visible. It's visible. Yeah. So, uh, uh, it's twenty twenty one. No, not yet. Is it? Uh, uh, it's visible to me. Yeah. No? Yeah. Visible. It's visible. Yes. So, okay. Yeah, okay. It's visible. okay. So UN Decade of Healthy Aging is 2021-2030. So why this MSTC, that is a multi-service day center. So actually we started, as um, Dr. Imtiaz has uh, informed, we started this uh, initiative in 2016, wherein uh, this, uh, our former CEO, Matthew Cherian, had, uh, had a discussion with the state government. Because Kerala, as you know, is a little bit ahead in the matter of aging. So uh, there, here, in another, uh, as uh, Dr. Imtiaz has said, local cell governments has taken a lot of initiatives because as per the policy, state policy, the state, um, the local cell government has to spend 5% of their budget. That is a mandatory. 5% uh, of the budget for the elderly and the differently able. So uh, without that, you know, they cannot, the budget will not be passed. So uh, as per the policy, uh, day center has to be, can be built or any other activity. So basically all these uh, LSGs were uh, building death centers. And you know what, when we, uh, through RTA, when we uh, found that there were around more than 1,000 death centers lying idle. And then uh, at the same time, KILA was sold. KILA, which is the uh, KILA Institute of Local Administration, which is uh, mandated to support these uh, death centers uh, for their uh, training and all these things. For Not only for the death center, the, uh, elected representative, the panchayat official, everybody has to be trained by the Kila only. So they also were looking at, uh, in 2017, they were looking at uh, application for 318 decade centers to be uh, constructed. So that was like, you know, then the director was saying that, you no, know, see, there are a lot of day centers lying idle and still the uh, local cell governments wanted to build more decade centers. So what is happening, you know, it is like, you know, after one year of opening, it gets closed because uh, building a small uh, hall or a, some uh, small facility providing some newspaper or some uh, furniture or a TV, it doesn't uh, work out for the elderly. And because you know, the elderly are saying, no, if I want to watch a TV or I want to read a newspaper, I can do it at my home. Why should I come to a desk center for this? So there should be some activity. Otherwise, you know what? even you know, when we were meeting the government officials, they were saying the desk center is a uh, failed concept. It doesn't work for uh, older people. Because you now, see, like this, constructing a building and it will not work. And then uh, this, uh, there was a study uh, conducted by HelpAge India in 2016, where we presented to state government that, see, this is the basic uh, needs. And you know, the state government convened a meeting, wherein, in, uh, that is in uh, 2016. 16, uh, this uh, study had started. 2017, there was a meeting. And all the stakeholders were called uh, to Trivandrum. And there was this Sayam Baba project, which Dr. Imtiaz has mentioned, that was rolled out. And then as part of that, two model uh, multi-service day centers were started. The first one was started in Nayatigra municipality, that is in Trivandrum district. And uh, that was run by HelpAge India. Actually, it was a tripartite agreement uh, between HelpAge India, Social Justice Department of uh, Government of Kerala, and the Nayatigra municipality. It's a tripartite agreement. So we started that in 2018 and it's still running with, uh, very beautifully. And this is a uh, model project for the Sayam Prabha. And there's one more project which is run by HLF PPT, which is the Hindustan Latex uh, Family Planning Trust. They are also running one in Calicut district. So these two are the model one. And apart from that, another 70 descenders were started by uh, 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 the already running descenders, uh, but uh, helped by the social justice department. But you know, that is also not uh, up, it is not, it's all slowly coming up. So all these uh, day centers, 
uh, were uh, running in a uh, more, uh, good manner and now after 2018 we started this and in uh, kila also was giving training we trained around 182 pal- local self government to run how to run a day center so uh, after this no, this 22 this september we had a uh, kila had a, a national conference on age friendly local self government where we myself and dr rajesh sir attended and you know we could see the improvement now this local self government are coming forward with a lot of new innovative ideas to run these uh, uh, centers so uh, just i will run through like you know the, these are the uh, basic uh, issues faced by the elderly uh, which we are addressing through these multi service day centers then uh, if you look at the problem it is the five generation there are five different generations uh, is the concept of this this period so basically if you see the traditional is boomers all the uh, different uh, yearly uh, categories are there i am not going to explain because uh, uh, because the shortage of the timing then uh, migration migration especially in kerala migration for livelihood is a major issue people are moving out of uh, the state moving out of the country for livelihood and the elderly are left alone at their home so that that creates the uh, loneliness and as uh, dr pai says uh, mentioned loneliness and depression all these things are happening then this is just a cartoon like you know see two uh, two younger couple has to uh, manage four older people and their children so it is the uh, it becomes a, sometimes it becomes a modern type of thing and you know society has to chip in with this uh, multi service day center type of concept so that you know the family also is uh, helped in in a manner to uh, carry the burden oh, oh it's not a burden but it's a duty but still you know the working couples and you know, they find it very difficult both of them are working then that's a difficult and the approach is the based uh, based on the institutional practical knowledge um where you know we categorize elders uh, into three categories working elders uh, which are uh, they, they can earn a livelihood there are assisted elders where uh, they need some medical support and the destitute or the bedridden ones so this again is a uh, explanation of what is the three categories these ca- three categories are categorized and the you know, program are um, designed in uh, ad- uh, addressing these three categories so these are the uh, basic concept I'm, i'll just rush through it because these are all and this is you know, a elder self group concept is which is uh, pioneered by helpage india under the leadership of dr um, rajesh De- devarakonda so we have running a lot of elder self help groups what we are trying to do in this day centers is to create elder self help group type of associations wherein you know as dr fais has said we the ownership should be given to these uh, elders it is like you know by the uh, by the elders for the elders of the elders so that sort of thing should be happening because otherwise uh, if it is a project mode when the funding stops or the uh, the person who has started uh, disappears the whole thing will collapse but if the ownership is with the elderly and if they have the ownership then you know it will survive that is a you know, sustainability or uh, sustain- that is what uh, what dr mintia said that the sustainability factor will come into this if we are giving it the ownership to the elders then service delivery this is just a uh, this thing three uh, pillars are there in the activating participation health and security where in you know, see uh, 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 when it comes to day centers participation means the senior citizens the elder self help group then college students can be uh, engaged where where you know, they can uh, chip in the school students can be engaged uh, then you know, in kerala there is a kudumbasri where the volunteers are there kudumbasri members are the village elder federations police police also can join with because the maintenance of senior citizen act where then they can help so then sc senior citizen association and the help this is a home care palliative care assisted devices medical consultation physio care dementia and alzheimer care eye care exercise i am just rushing through because you know this is a long uh, topic where you know, actually we had prepared a, a hand uh, handbook where all these things are there. that's why if anybody wants it we can share it with them so that's why i am just rushing it through all these things so these are the activities where we uh, give it in the day centers fitness is there help desk is there recreation and activating is there then uh, helpline is there counseling desk is there community coordination outreach is there where we go and uh, go to the homes then home care then caregivers training is conducted geriatric consultation subsidized services heritage tours 
tours we organize picnic organize we will organize pilgrimages we organize then the digital literacy now we will be having a digital security program uh, supported by google then livelihood opportunities are being as i said no esgs elder service groups then spiritual sessions then scenario in kerala see this is what i said no neyattingara municipality actually you know i why i want to show this is you know uh, from right from 2019 in the budget speech finance minister is uh, explaining about this day centers if you see the red uh, mark thing it is very clearly he is saying uh, focusing on the day centers 2019 2020 2021 all these you know their the focus was on the day centers only and what he was saying you know if um, uh, these day centers are um, brought into pakka thing because what is focusing on that 5% of the budget and that was something around uh, he was uh, saying that it is somewhere around 290 crores in kerala state if 290 crores is properly utilized uh, the day centers can be uh, coming up for the benefit of the elderly so, and you know way forward in uh, like you know in national level and kerala actually if there are a lot of programs being run by different agencies uh, in india and not in, even in kerala there is a kerala police is running care it is a care aid and relief for elderly then you know national program for health care of elderly that is the NH- nphc by the ministry of health then uh, kila like in kerala kila is running this day centers for them then uh, grand care then kudumbasri is running program sayam prabha program is there national social assistance program is there now this agressor program is there all these programs can be integrated because you know we need to have a some uh, place of uh, like in you know, a resource center type of uh, thing through this day centers where all these program can be integrated and you know it can be used like for the benefit of the elderly so here you know, in kerala we have an around 941 gram panchayats 87 municipalities six corporation 152 block panchayats 14 district here i am saying you know if we have the convergence of all these uh, actors like in you know, social justice department local self government department kila then kudumbasri vayamitram all these if they come to the ngos also the ngos is like help aid india and all they also can hand hold uh, this activity so this uh, in totality you know i i say you know this such as sustainability and uh, engagement of the elderly these factors can be taken care of if we are having giving the ownership to the elderly and running this program and you know the ngos can support uh, like you know, hand hold it for uh, to Two to three years, or three to maximum maybe five years. That's all. After that, now the, uh, the local self governments can run it as uh, the Pfizer uh, has already shown that it can be done. Only thing, you know, there is some uh, will should be there, uh, and the political will or the administrative will should be there to maximize the effect for the benefit of the elderly. Thank you. Thank you very much, Vijay. We'll come to the question. we have two questions in the inbox the first one is directed to mr faz uh, this is from virais mu uh, he is asking as all our senior citizens while running supporting such program any challenges you come across sorry i couldn't get it uh, he is asking since everyone is uh, who is running this center are elderly people uh, are there any challenges that you come across in running this centers no no not at all i mean they are running it very well we are hand holding them it's not like complete completely abundant or something the block development officer is supposed to be overall nodal to see that it is functioning well opening on time you know cleanliness is maintained because we assume that they need you know at least a couple of years for you know to for this to become a concept which is acceptable to all and uh, the challenges of course is that Uh, you know the different uh, socio economic background of course of the people you know, you know some uh, the people have different needs so, so there are some people who come out there their concern is that you know they are not getting let's say old age pension or there's some you know they want to get something tested or they they have some some land issues or some personal issue or or they want you know a ration or something which you know maybe their children's name is not added so there's there's that group and then then there's the other group which is let's say retired officers or teachers or things like that who have no such concern they only need to spend time with friends and chill there so this whole uh, economic jo uh, difference is there that is true and uh, since everyone is the member there's uh, you know no limit to 
who can and who cannot come so we are just uh, you know the our only challenge right now is to make you know everyone acceptable out there and no one should be you know they they should not be afraid to you know come to those centers feel in any way left out or out of the league so that we are doing through uh, you know sensitizing everyone you know the iec and it is working because uh, many many of them even the you know the most well off of them also they have come up and uh, they are saying like you know we have no caste no religion and nothing our only uh, caste is our age so we are all old and now we need each other so i mean uh, people are uh, sensitizing to that and they are they are doing well and we hope to you know m- make it better sure thank you very much sir there is one more question uh, the last now hopefully we'll have more question dr rajesh kumar chandar from uh, punjab university is asking is there any distinction in terms of the strategy that we make for our outreach or extension program based on the heterogeneous group of elderly that we cater to based on the income category their uh, education type of family rural urban caste religion ethnicity disability etc um, so dr rajesh uh, basically at help age india we have you know there are many cuts to the program that we do in terms of how we Uh, intervene uh, one of the, one of the major approach is rural urban so we have programs in the rural area which is customized to the rural elderly in terms of their need which is mostly you know livelihood uh, you know healthcare and other things and again urban you know in that space you know physiotherapy services day care centers and and and, and programs like that are done uh, in terms of education religious ethnicity disability we do not make any distinction our centers and programs are open to everyone and they are free to access it uh, uh, however we also have another classification which biju touched on very briefly uh, which is based on the ability we believe very uh, passionately that elderly are uh, cannot be divided into you know uh, young old 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 and very old uh, they are, can be classified into the ability so some who can who is a 65 years or elderly could be so dependent because of their health conditions and other things their ability to uh, move about mobility and uh, and so that you know they become uh, dependent or bed bound uh, similarly a 75 year elderly could be so active that he would not need any assistance so based on the ability and their activeness and their mobility we classify them as active assisted and dependent and that is the classification that we follow at helpage um, so hopefully i have been able to answer your question there are some more clarification you can type in the question answer box uh, biju coming back to your very exciting experiment in kerala we've always been fascinated because kerala has been way ahead in terms of its focus on elderly care and the government proactively stepping in uh, one question that comes to my mind and i hopefully a lot of people are also thinking is uh, because this is a very government led program uh, where you know there is a funding there is a partner like help age india which is implementing it uh, which is very different from what mr faz is doing in terms of getting the elderly the elderly are themselves running it they're taking ownership what do you think is the overall ownership of the elders who come to that kind of a center uh, which is being supported by the government and what do you think going forward would be sustainability of such centers if supposing the government fundings are not there going forward yeah uh, here um, uh, they are all very active you know see they want when uh, in as i said no this elder self groups are formed there are different groups are formed and you know they are given charges also so for each group there will be a leader will be there so that you know when they are the leadership you know they are given some assignments also like doing some as uh, uh, Fy, uh, mr phai has said uh, they are given uh, activities to be uh, looked after so like that you now here also we we give them some charge for uh, activities so they are very happy to do that even outreach you know where they are during that 2018 flood they uh, create um, you know made some food items and they sold it and donated it for the uh, welfare of the uh, the flood victims so that is the way you know they they have been empowered so uh, and you know we don't find any problem in the sustainability factor also because you know see this, this has become institutionalized in uh, the government sector because you know see as i told you, you know the 5% of the funds should be spent for the elderly and this uh, buildings are being constructed or maintained by the 
local self government which are the base ground level government system so uh, now what we want is you now we, we are trying to advocate with the government is that to hand over the running like as the, mr faiz has said it should be run by the elderly not by the government the government should, like as you know it, it like a, have a watch over it give the uh, hand holding support or you know any support needed they can be given because otherwise if you see like in kerala the retirement age is 56 and you know mostly because of the good health facilities people are living till 100 years you know without much effort because so that means you know 40 more than 40 to 44 years people are living in a retired life so for the those people you know there should be some way to be engaged and their uh, services can be utilized so we, this is where you no know, the point comes their service can be utilized as i said uh, mr paise said like you know, for in the urban area you know, the, these people's uh, ability can be utilized for the benefit of the community there will be retired nurses retired teachers retired engineers retired doctors retired nurses lot of people are there so all these uh, experiences or their experience can be utilized for the benefit of the community and when sustainability factor will not even if the government stops it the fund but it will not stop but then even if the government stops it when the ownership is with the uh, with the individuals or the elderly they they'll be able to raise the funds also from the community so it it is the sustainability will not be a, a factor here and again you know if you uh, somebody has asked you know this uh, um, gender factor in all our descendants what we see is that you know women are the maximum number who are coming but if you see the senior citizen association 95% of the senior citizen association have male members only but here it is the reverse thank you thank you vijay that was very useful uh, now i think uh, when we are looking at and then again you know our discussion has been veering around much more on the rural and you know non paying and the you know uh, lower socio economic segment in terms of their need being left out and 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 things like that but i think we also have to take cognizance of the fact that there is a large urban elderly which is which is which is fast emerging in urban india and and if you if you look at you know studies which has been done uh, the indian geriatric care service market is currently estimated to be valued at uh, us dollar 25.7 billion uh, in 2021 and it has got a composite you know annual growth rate of uh, 7.7% Uh, for the period 2021 to 2028 uh, senior citizens in the urban space in the paying category are emerging as an influential consumer segment uh, they are not just only dependent on pension but also on other income and have great purchasing power they are increasingly becoming assertive about their need as compared to senior who were there about two decades ago and they were they are very clear on what they want and what kind of services that they need also on the other hand if you look at the children the children of uh, you know working uh, you know children of so we had working parent to children now we have working children to parent where you know the uh, son and daughter in law the daughter or the son in law both of them are working and then there is a elderly at home who is all the time all there alone so uh, there is a concept of something like you know crash for the elderly you know somewhere the elderly can go and stay for the day and in the evening come back all these are all these are all these are you know needs and demand which is exploding in the urban area and we need to be cognizant of that fact that this is something that is gaining prominence uh, in this uh, regard i have the pleasure of having uh, and ashish thank you for coming ashish gupta is here with us uh, ashish is the founding founder and managing director of samarth elder care uh, he has also served as a management consultancy at mckinsey and company india in european offices he is a media entrepreneur who co-founded the 9.9 group and an education leader in the university the private and government sector ashish has uh, ashish passion is working in the elderly care sector through samarth and samarth elder care has adopted a very curated approach which encourages active engagement by providing trusted product and services tailored to their need and in a very, in a few years of time ashish and samarth has been able to really spread their wing and get into lot of the states and tier 2 tier 3 cities and uh, really uh, meet the elderly need uh, there so as is over to you we are really excited to hear about your experience now it has been in summer for you <clears throat> thank you <coughs> i'm sorry <It's, clears throat> i think it's just the thing that i i think that's fine <laughs> <laughs> but 
thanks very much. Thanks for having me on this panel. I think it's a it's a real privilege. Uh, you know, the stories I've heard so far have been really, really inspiring. Uh, I think what uh, Mr. Mumtaz has done in Jamtara has also to some extent influenced how we have thought about and uh, gone about looking at uh, multi-activity centers. So, uh, you know, I'm going to come at it in, from, a, from a slightly different perspective because while I think we all agree on, you know, what are the key drivers, what is the sort of overall environment, uh, you know, we've had, I think, two benefits over the last uh, uh, six years. Yeah. So one yeah. is, I've, I've worked with probably, you know, uh, close or engaged with close to a million urban elderly across the country and really understanding what is it that people need. I mean, for us, that was a that was a great revelation. And uh, we also did a fairly large research uh, uh, because while we saw for example, what the, you know, the McKinsey Health Institute says, or, you know, what Cornell Institute for Healthy Futures says that I'm a part of, but uh, we have a very unique context in India. We live in a very sort of resource poor country where there is high trust deficit. Uh, there are also divergent interests. There are also, there's also a huge diversity in terms of people uh, by, you take it by functionality, you take it by the kind of environment they live in, rural, urban, uh, and we had a we had a set of very interesting insights. You know, we asked this question. Uh, the the question we were investigating was, you know, what is it that people want? What is really the problem we should solve for? And very interestingly, the question, the the answer to this question from the younger lot, you know, when you talked about problems of elderly or issues, was you know about safety, about health, about uh, uh, you know convenience, about handling emergencies everything about physical needs. And the same question when we asked the elderly, their response was, you know, orthogonal. Uh, while I'm sure, you know, they do realize that physical needs are also important, but the most important things for them were social, you know, social and emotional needs. And that too, not very complicated. There were only three things. One, which I think has been spoken about, you know, the, the, the need to talk to people. So people to talk to. Uh, you know, loneliness and all that, and we get it. We, that's very intuitive. We all understand that. But the second interesting need was places to go to. And we hadn't realized how important mobility is for them, or lack of mobility or constraint in mobility comes in the way of their, their life and, you know, uh, in some ways constricts their life. And the third and perhaps the most important one was the need to continue to, you know, <coughs> feel that they are required, that they have a purpose. <coughs> so that sort of became the basis on which <coughs> we started to provision these services. And uh, <coughs> we turned the problem around and said, look, if that's the biggest need, then is there a way for us to leverage that need of elderly and create, you know, facilities or uh, centers which will leverage this need of elderly to create facilities for elderly. So our approach to setting up, uh, and you know, I'll show you some pictures uh, about what we do. And Camilla, you'll see some of the ideas that you have put out, uh, you know, being implemented there. And it's very close to Jamtara. Actually, it's in it's in Bokaro, so so not very not very far. It seems Jharkhand seems to you know be the be the fountainhead for for many of these uh, initiatives. Uh, but the whole idea is how do you use the energy and this need for elderly to create <coughs> environments that other elderly can use and these elderly who are providing can feel fulfilled, right? So, so that was one, one important thing. The second we realized that, uh, you know, for elderly, there is value in any solution to be comprehensive. Point solutions don't work for seniors usually. You know, if you say, look, I'll solve for healthcare. Now, for an elderly to integrate healthcare from here and another service from here, another service from here, you know, a, a, a place to call for something else becomes complex. And there, you know, what they end up doing then is actually give up on a few things and say, you know what, this is so complicated, I'm not even going to do this. So if pension is so complicated, you know what, if I can afford it, I'll, I'll, I'll probably not take my pension. 
you know which is also a response that uh, that sometimes elderly have because they are not willing to negotiate complexity to the same level that perhaps you and i would right and so for us the model became that whatever we do uh, you know the activity center needs to be therefore interdisciplinary or it needs to be broad in terms of what it offers right if it only focuses on entertainment probably that will not work that will work for a few but it won't work for a, for a larger number if you only focus on healthcare probably it won't work because you know people won't see this as meeting a large set of their needs right then the challenge became okay if you're going to do all of this how do you make that happen right and that's where the idea of using uh, the 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 strength the capabilities that elderly may bring to serve more elderly you know sort of sort of came about so i'm going to take uh, maybe a couple of minutes to just show you pictures this has nothing else but uh, images of the of the center multi activity center that we that we have is my screen visible yeah yes yeah, sure. it's it's really a you know a space which has a space for learning awareness space for healthcare space for uh, entertainment you see uh, we also provide uh, assistance and support so there is you know things if you want to be done online they can be provided there and above all an opportunity to contribute to contribute to to the community around you uh, and we also have a uh, you know uh, uh, a room which is available for respite care uh, and uh, people can stay overnight uh, they like in in the in the facility uh, so we do learning we use uh, you know online uh, learning as well uh, and here the fact that we run a community across the country helps because you know doing all of this for one center becomes difficult but if you are doing it for a community which is spread across 110 cities then it becomes you know much easier it also provides opportunity for people in every center to you know meet and uh, interact with people from from other parts of the country so you know we have uh, people talking about all sorts of uh, you know we bring in experts uh, there are sessions which are led by the elderly themselves and uh, they participate in sessions which are conducted from across the country sometimes even internationally uh, we do physical activities you know yoga pranayam which uh, which which is uh, which comes easy or relatively easy to to seniors we focus on on healthcare, so we have doctors, we have uh, you know uh, camps for vaccination, we have uh, about homeopathic and uh, allopathic doctors coming in, and many of them are community members themselves. So it's not that you have to sort of get experts from outside, but uh, you know oftentimes these are people from within who are able to offer it to to other people. Uh, you know eye checkups and so on are conducted at the center, and social engagement. You know from uh, celebrating birthdays to uh, you know, to screening movies because again you know mobility becomes difficult and many people give up on these things so this becomes an easy place in their neighborhood where they can you know take advantage of these things uh, celebrations uh, you know together whether it is holi or diwali or you know whatever else so so the idea is that uh, you know they 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 are able to get a, a whole range of uh, uh, or, or a variety of experiences from the same space and the space gets used much better and the final thing which i was uh, you know i would emphasize a lot in places like these is you know having an opportunity to make a purposeful contribution to the community so seniors who are part of the uh, you know who are part of this uh, center also then do things which contribute to 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 other seniors you know whether it is uh, uh, <clears throat> going to old age homes, uh, spending time with them or, uh, you know, doing vaccination in other places, uh, holding medical camps in other places, etc. So which 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 fulfills an important need for them, but also allows us to multiply the the benefit and the impact of the center to a community which is which is much broader and much larger. So that's the that's the sort of idea at least we've tried to try to build on. Now it's been running for a year. And uh, we are now sort of, you know, looking to expand it in other places as well. Uh, the good thing and uh, an important thing, and this was our learning from actually Jamtara as well, that, you know, it's important that a few people need to come together to do this. So, so you need the community, you need the local administration, and we've had the benefit of uh, 
support from the local uh, from the district administration in both setting up and you know then making some of the government uh, uh, facilities accessible uh, and it's funded really by us and uh, we have uh, vedanta as a partner who has uh, contributed you know csr funds to this and we believe this is a model which you know works and uh, it's possible to take that much broader uh, it will take investment it's not something that uh, starts to you know uh, become sustainable right right away but uh, there is a path to sustainability over a four year period uh, some of the things uh, you know we are starting to do already and uh, some of the things uh, will happen in, in you know times to come that's a little bit our uh, journey on uh, on the uh, you know uh, the activity center uh, and we don't call it a care center because you know the whole idea is that yes care is uh, care is there but uh, often times they really don't want care I mean, you know they don't they they need care but it's not that they accept it willingly so we we, we very carefully uh, tried to sort of take a different approach and say you know this is a center to live life and uh, actually provide care to others than to care to you and uh, i think that that brings a different flavor to how uh, the members engage with the center and contribute thank you ashish thank you very much i think great insight into you know typically you know we the civil society have been mostly blamed and sometimes rightly so that we are very much you know tilted towards you know, looking at and the marginalized and all not looking at the sustainability in terms of where the cross subsidy model could come in so in that uh, sense i think you've got a model which is which is which is almost there in terms of the concept and its proof of concept and scale up you've got a sustainability aspect around it in terms of fee per service and other things uh, i don't know if you're a big uh, fan of the trickle down uh, you know economic theory but i uh, when i was going through your website and the work that you do you have also have a very strong passion to see this through in the other regions also in the rural area for example uh, in the in the not so not so not so affluent pockets also so what what do you think and how do you think this could actually you know reach that scale because that is where we're looking at something which works which stays and which is owned by the community and it's not something which would just uh, you know bubble for a year or so if there's funding it runs and then it just goes out of circulation right now so first of all you know i'm too patient for trickle down i should tell you uh, it takes too longer time uh, i think one needs to actively you know build pipelines so that it can happen much faster and that's really you know conceptually what we are trying to do here we are saying look there are some elderly who are or a group of elderly who are more able who have more capacity to do things uh, more resourceful and you know can we harness that energy into on, and that those resources into reaching out to those who, who are more in need uh, so, so one, it provides a resource pipeline to serve. So, you know, the vaccination, the health camps, uh, you know, the food distribution, etc. That we do for the other uh, elderly. It's 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 funded out of the uh, you know out of the center. The center not only works for people who are members, but in a way them up creates an opportunity for them to contribute to to, to us right so there's a direct benefit first direct benefit that goes to a thousand people right in terms of uh, resource uh, mobilization uh, and, and ensuring that this is sustainable and not a not a not a single thing there are a few things that we have uh, we, are, we are doing there we offer equipment rent. so there are you know there, there are some uh, some equipment we have from uh, you know like uh, uh, beds and uh, uh, wheelchair and uh, like that, uh, which we, which is available. Uh, respite care is available for people. Uh, there are some services uh, we charge for small charges for services, and we are also the, the members. By the way, one of the things that I show you in the picture is that this is extremely important. I think the point was made earlier, but how you build this is important. And so we do have a, 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 a managing committee of members who's also very seized of this need to make it sustainable, right? So one of the projects that they have uh, kind of uh, undertaken is to create a small little factory, you know, a, a, like a livelihood kind of thing where they're gonna make uh, 
diapers, adult diapers, and uh, sanitary pads, uh, which you know it doesn't cost a whole lot, but create things which are usable. It creates uh, where, where they can bring in some people to 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 work with them, uh, and and that's for example one of the things that will also uh, you know become a part of this center. So I think there are ways in which you can harness the the the, the energy of the more able uh, elderly. And elderly for elderly is a great, uh, great, you know, great theme uh, and idea. Thank you, thank you, Ashish. Um, really useful, and uh, you know, very comprehensively answered in that sense. Uh, so, uh, you know, we've seen the model that Ashish runs, and quite rightly, you know, in the scale that uh, you know Samad does, and also the fact that you know there is also you know it's still in the urban space of looking at the need of the elderly. Uh, there is a comprehensive approach, as Ashish said. You know, there is, you know, they have a respite room, they have a recreation center, and all. Uh, that brings me to Madam Neela Mohan, uh, who actually exactly runs something similar in Panchavati. Uh, you know, Panchavati, where you know you have short stay facility where you know the children who you know, parents who want to come, children who want to take them there, can leave for some days and then they go back uh, and. Uh, elderly coming on their own. Um, so in this regard, uh, Madam Nilambon has also been very active in trying to get into, uh, you know, her, you know, by the, you know, get her teeth into the elder, you know, daycare center concept, so to say, and trying to do something. But, and again, you know, this is one of the trigger for us to be also hosting this webinar is when she came and said, you know, I've tried my luck, you know, I've tried to push things in you know, the agenda, but somehow it's not flying. Maybe we need to brainstorm and find out what needs to be done, what is the roadmap. Um, so a uh, great pleasure in have, inviting Madam Ilamon here. And uh, she is a alumni of the Banaras Hindu University. Uh, she is a fast fashion designer for those uninitiated. Uh, she ran a, a garment factory to her credit. Uh, an uh, entrepreneur and a pa passionate practitioner uh, towards finding feasible solution for elderly. Her senior care home in Panchpati is an example of graceful living, matched with eco-friendly environment. Uh, she also wants to work in the daycare space and would like to bring in sustainable solution in this space. Uh, Madam, over to you uh, to share your experience and how do you see this going forward? Thank you, Imtiaz. I've been uh, hearing everybody and I think everyone has covered very nicely of the four points that you have written. The first point, um, why should we have this, has been covered very well. But what we are, I think what we have missed out one thing. The reason I started Panchvati also, and the reason why I feel daycare centers should be more um, inclusive. If you notice, young people are always busy working. They don't have time for their parents, or sometimes the, they don't have the means to communicate with their parents, or sometimes they're out of the town and their parents are left alone. Yeah, that is one reason. Also, if you see women, if you look at the international labor organization figures, the number of women working has dropped by 10% in the past three years, ever since COVID, which means women are having to work closer to home. And if, uh, because I, I do think about women being a woman entrepreneur myself, I feel that women should be allowed to work and they can only do it if their home responsibilities are taken care of. So if we have a daycare center, which we do not call a daycare center, which we call a club, a place where elders can go, they can spend the entire day, they can eat, sleep, rest, they can spend the night if there is no one at home to look after them. So the place which is looked after completely is what would be a daycare center, which we are not going to call a daycare center, we are calling it a chopal. So I have certain points which I have written according to your questions, MPRs. And uh, I think Ashish is very right in saying that the first most important uh, issue, which is for the elders is that they need to feel needed. They need to feel loved. They need to, they need a physical hug, a physical emotion. They need to be pampered, they need to laugh. Apart from the fact that they may be pieces of porcelain or china and they need the health, 
to be looked after and they need their disabilities to be cared for. I would call myself an elder person being 67 years old. I, I'm in that category, you know, where I need, but I, I feel what I need most. I need people most. I need to be loved most. I need to have my brain functioning most. So I need some intellectual stimulation, something to do and something to do which is useful. So that is that covers your point number one. Your point number two is the feasible alternative models. And I would say, let us start as usual. As usual, the South Kerala is always first in pick, doing everything first. They have got the first best model started for, you know, uh, you know, people um, uh, for, for the daycare centers. Eventually, the North will take it up nicely. Ashish is doing it at in uh, Jharkhand. It is happening. So this is great. Somebody is doing it. And I wanted very much that Delhi should do it. That's why I came to you. If there's that, you know, let's do something about it. We need to do. So I feel, number one, you know, we have a lot of, I wrote to the social welfare department. They said, we have a lot of community centers or seniors, senior centers. Now, what is lacking in the senior centers? Why senior centers are different to what we are proposing. Everybody has, I mean, Camilla in the first place has given a very, very good example. You know, she's covered everything which I had written and I saw it was as if she was reading out my paper. <laughs> so she's covered everything. I'm not going to waste everyone's time repeating it, but we need to have the basic is the senior center. The next is something that gives them lunch at some kind of a subsidized rate and a place to sleep, which Helped had started 12 years ago and in Panchvati, something like that, you know, that assisted living is taken care of. Some kind of activity is happening. That is the next step. And then what my dream is that it should be a multi-generational activity center. So if you have a multi-generational, then you have a lot of young people coming in and paisa to se aajayega. Then you would, you know, all whatever you're worrying about sustainability will come from there because young people would like to come in and pay for learning to do pottery or to, you know, to have a book discussion or join a theater workshop, or, you know, do something really interesting, do weaving or do, you know, do cooking, do interesting cooking, call people over for doing cooking. So, you know, it should be a club better than the Habitat Center and better than the, uh, you know, all the clubs that we have here, you know, the Gymkhana club, because it will be full of activity and full of young people, you know. So if you, if you go to the Gymkhana club, you feel you've gone to an old age home because there are only old people. Everyone is plus 90 or 100 over there, I think. So, <laughs> and some of, them say, some of them say SBI is also a daycare center. <laughs> <laughs> True. So I, I would say, Yes, yeah, so I would say, if, you know, if we are able to create something which doesn't have the stigma of the old age, like Ashish says, care home, nahi bolna hai. so that, you know, care home, old age home, all this thing, that stigma, if we remove and we call it a chopal, a place for old and young to be, you know what the chopal was in the village, na, imtiaz, where you would say it and uh, the old man would have his hookah and the young people would leave their babies with the old man or woman and say, okay, you just, you know, take care of them while we're out in the fields working. So that was the chopal. People would get together, have tea, eat together, smoke together, you know, have some fun together. You know, that, that was the chopal. So that's why I wanted to call it a chopal. So just for people to get together, but young and old together. So this concept and therefore, the, I think personally, um, sustainability fact comes, factor will happen if the government is able to give a building or if, as uh, Fais Ahmadji was saying, if we are, they are able to create some empty buildings, you know, use those empty buildings or help us get many, many buildings very often from people or get a building. So we get a building so they, and we get the infrastructure some amount is given for the payment of the salaries and the maintenance, you know. If we are able to get part of that, then the activity can be given for an, any NGO to handle. You know, all the NGOs are, they are NGOs because they are 
all into something. And it need not be one NGO. It can be a group of NGOs. It can be four NGOs, five NGOs. Some people specialize with children. Some people specialize in activities. Some people specialize in sustainability and doing something for the environment. You know, these people can just come together and say, okay, we, we now we've got a place. So we've got a place and let us do it. Okay, on Thursdays, we'll come and teach people how to do plastic recycling. So they have, they have done their job. And another person comes and says, okay, on Fridays, we'll come and teach cooking, inter interesting cooking. And so all these young ladies who want to cook nicely for their husbands, maybe they'll come and join that club, you know, or they might come and teach in that club. So a different activity, which is like a club, which is very participatory, and very inclusive is the is the dream that I've been thinking of. And for in my mind, whatever is happening, whatever we do, we must remember first of all, these are our elders. They have done enough. If they have crossed sixty years, they must have done something for their families, for the country, for society, for their children. We don't have to make this a commercial venture. I think it should be completely non-commercial, but it should be sustainable. And this is what I've been promoting all this time. Sustainable, it should be wheelchair friendly. It should be internationally accessible. The, it should be disabled friendly completely so that any kind of people can come on over there. And of course, everybody needs assistance in theirs. We can't get around without assistance. You know, people, people need it. People need walkers or wheelchairs. I mean, in my old age home, more than half the people are using walkers. So, you know, people need to be able to um, reach there. I mean, my sister has both her knees are very bad. She's, um, but she's brilliant, you know, and she's, she writes well, she talks well, she can handle book clubs, she can handle intellectual discussions, she can talk to young people for two hours on an end. But to go anywhere, to reach anywhere. She's happy to teach in the university, but to reach the university, universities are not disability friendly. So whatever we do, we have to think, you know, from the heart. First of all, we have to think from here. And once we start thinking from here, I'm sure we'll be able to do the right thing. There's no point in my repeating. Everybody has covered every point that I had written to you. So there's really nothing to, you know, cover on this. I, I am only very, very clear on this point that this project that whatever anyone does for the elders should not be a money-making project. So that, that's what I feel. I also, on the, on the flip side of it, I say, because I say it's not going to be a money-making project, then I, we will not have young people involved in it because if a young person has to make a career for himself, he has to make money. And if he doesn't make money, how does he educate his children and take care of take care of his parents, his grandparents and his young baby. So how will he do it? So therefore, I guess there are two both sides to a coin. We have a huge, more than 5% of India's population is, you know, rich, they can afford. So I, I will not say that uh, it should be a gymkhana, but I, I will also say that we need places like Antara to exist and but we also need people like Helpage to do the other side and equally beautiful. So basically this is what I have to say. Thank you. Thank you, madam. Thank you so much. Uh, you kindly, you kind of delineated uh, the space and going forward. Uh, I think what kind of when I was listening to you, what triggered you know the question in me was the fact that you're talking about you know young people and their involvement. I think that's something that uh, you know uh, we do through our you know partner Helpage International. Camellia would be able to you know give us some insight with the Old Person Association OPS adopting a very intergenerational approach in the work that they do in terms of the elderly care, in terms of the uh, daycare center, in terms of mostly everything that they do. Uh, you know, uh, uh, so Camelia, would you like to share some of those experiences? Oh, I'd be, I'd be very happy to. I think, I think, but I think you've you know, hit the nail on the head, that intergenerational approach that, and you, you've all mentioned it in different ways is, is so important. And it's not a one-way 
um, relationship. It's very much a two-way relationship. Um, there's a huge amount that we can learn from other people and engage and get that and, and vice versa. And Help H has got a yeah, huge amount of experience working in very different areas with intergenerational relationships. Yes, part of that is uh, has been care and support through volunteers. But as um, Ashish was also saying, um, older people can equally provide the volunteer support and care um, as well. But I think uh, it, it's generational. We're all, we're all ageing. If, uh, if we're lucky, we'll get to older ages. And, um, and so I think that that intergenerational relationship is, is very important. I think at a society level, we'll often like pit younger against older. And I think it's a bit of a, it's a pretty false uh, dichotomy. We tend to live in families and, um, and the relationship and reciprocity is, is always huge at every point. So making sure that these centers are open and, and engage all ages is, is really important. We, we've actually just released the intergenerational guide, um, giving good examples, including in India of some great practices. I can share that in the chat. Thank you, thank you, Camelia. Uh, so that brings us to the whole fact that, you know, Madam Ilamon was saying that we need to adopt, uh, focus more on the heart rather than the pocket. And uh, also, you know, look at model, which could be free of cost at the front end, but then some, the certain funding and other support that is coming in. Uh, that brings me to uh, Bajesh Gupta, our guest today here from GMRV Foundation. Uh, CSR has played a very critical role in the growth of the civil society and various development effort through them. Uh, so, uh, you know, with Brajesh Ji, we have had a very long association. We done a lot of medical unit, mobile medical unit, and other thing. But I think what what was most innovative was that uh, with Braj with with the JMA Foundation and Brajesh Ji's support, we were able to pilot a concept of a daycare center. It is running in Bharat Bihar. All of you are you know please invited. Uh, some of you are in Delhi, you can go visit. Um, uh, others can come and see. Uh, so this is a center that we are running in one of the slums of Delhi. And this is uh, in the in the area where uh, JMR also works near the airport. And the whole concept was a very interesting concept where we said uh, the daycare center is where the elderly in the community would come, natural need for socializing, recreation and other things. But over a period of time from year two or year three, they would become a central force uh, wherein it, the daycare center becomes a hub and they would direct all the community development activity because naturally elderly in our family are considered to be like the you know family head and you know they command some respect. So can we bring that back in the in the whole discussion and center stays the elderly, but the elderly are mm -hmm. ensuring that Children in the home go for their schooling, complete their education. They're put into skilling and job. There are people in the community who are, look, you know, they mobilize and, you know, look at healthcare for their uh, community, sanitation, hygiene. So the whole lot of community development happening where uh, education is happening, employment is happening, uh, um, health uh, care is taken care. So everything is through a leadership role of the elderly through the daycare center becoming a hub. So quite an interesting experiment which we did. And we are here fortunate to have Mr. Brajesh share some of those experience. Also how the CSR is viewing this space in terms of where does it go from here of saying that, okay, is there an employee engagement opportunity with the, with the daycare center where the employee of a corporate can come and you know uh, volunteer sometime. On the other hand, can we look at centers where many of the employee of the corporate would like to have their parent go during the daytime when they're away in office. So it's again a two-way street, a lot of interesting potentialities and possibilities. But again, uh, who better than Mr. Brajesh to give us an insight. Uh, Brajesh ji, over to you. Yeah, uh, thank you, Dr. Imtiaj. Uh, uh, this, I will just, uh, you know, before going what we are doing, you have uh, briefly mentioned about that. And, but before we started in 2018 with help page only, uh, we did a small, not say study, it was not a very, uh, uh, like uh, uh, Mr. Fayed said that it was not a concept note. So similarly, we also approached, we did a kind of uh, a survey in the community to understand you know, what kind of uh, challenges the elderly are facing uh, in the communities. Because in Delhi, uh, uh, most of you understand, you know, Delhi has a very mixed kind of population. Uh, it's a it's a Delhi is having uh, around 428 villages within. So these villagers actually, they, they still have the status of the village within the, uh, within Delhi. 
and how they survive in this uh, basically they have built uh, many uh, you know multi story buildings they rent out and most of the families who are native of those villages they survive on that rental income only so and many people who come from outside they take the space to stay on rent so that's how uh, you know these uh, these villages have their uh, kind of economy and uh, when we started working in uh, slums uh, the scenario was very different it's it's just reverse so uh, we took up a, a small survey try to understand uh, you know the issues so as we have been listening you know the issue of loneliness definitely it's a universal kind of now uh, social security is another aspect where uh, only one fourth are the pensioners and uh, uh, biju showed a very interesting uh, you know the cartoon uh, single child you know the joint family is breaking down shifting towards nuclear families and nuclear family again to the single child kind of family and the two single children getting married having uh, you know the burden of taking care of the i would say burden uh, should not use that burden word but having to you know take care of the four uh, dependent parents so this is going to multiply uh, in uh, you know days to come the uh, the very interesting fact what we found in the delhi slums and these villages is having the health issues are mostly you know the lifestyle related health issues and a uh, lot of issues on like uh, problems related with knees and you know mobility related so so those aspects we mapped out and then we started uh, uh, kind of surveying the families uh, why this issue of uh, not taking care of the parents or the elderly is coming very very interesting fact we found is uh, you know the the two things that is uh, shortcoming in uh, care giving responsibility uh, so that that is that responsibility thing is breaching now in the family institution itself and attitude and relationship issues so so the relationship issues mainly uh, we observed is on uh, mother in law daughter in law relations uh, that then percolates to other relations so so uh, it's very very uh, complex kind of scenario then uh, we and uh, help page had rounds of brainstorming that how do we start and what should we start and we thought of a multi activity center for elderly in the uh, dwarka slum area so keeping in mind the the affordable uh, age friendly health care uh, i would say the age friendly health care because we observed lot many issues related with you know kind of uh, where you need a lot of physiotherapy interventions so first we focused on uh, having a physiotherapy unit within the multi activity center and uh, physiotherapist is there so he becomes the key person to uh, you know kind of entry point activity to elderly to come to the uh, multi activity center so physiotherapy happens regularly for uh, you know Uh, all kind of no restrictions many questions came on gender uh, age so it's a physiotherapy required for anybody uh, you know in the senior citizen category can uh, register with the center and get the physiotherapy services regularly so that's the one key thing recreational activities uh, so as other centers are having you know the reading corner uh, the games to play and uh, you know some activities like on yoga and uh, other going to the park and having some sessions on uh, spirituality so so that also we uh, focus on that regular sessions on some some or other aspects of spirituality keeps happening there and as dr imtiaz mentioned it's uh, becoming hub for the development because we not only having the multi activity center but having other activities on education on vocational training and uh, we had a, a project during covid uh, because many things came on android and uh, the this generation elderly people were either not so friendly to use the android on that extent 
and uh, so we conducted you know uh, android operating classes for them and uh, you know when the vaccination drives started uh, registering on the portal was a challenge for the elderly so facilitating the registrations on the covin portal taking them to the vaccination center uh, because centers were established but mobility so so those kind of activity how the elderly uh, you know get engaged in uh, other activities uh, like on other community development so uh, we have a vocational training center for school and college dropout youth so these elderly are uh, you know oriented and they are uh, you know explained about those courses so they from their own community they mobilize the youth and they then feel that yes i am contributing uh, you know uh, transforming somebody's life through this intervention so they refer the candidates to the training center once they get trained and placed somewhere because we have the mechanism to not only train but it's mainly to place them so so once they get placed they go back to the uh, you know the elderly who has referred him and uh, you know they feel very happy about what small uh, contribution they make to somebody's life uh similarly uh, we keep on awaiting them you know the all children should go to school during covid uh, uh learning gaps are uh, you know create children could not go to schools and uh, uh, many challenges were there so now there are learning gaps and to fulfill those gaps certain activities we take up from the foundation and uh, we provide opportunities for children to interact with these elderly through this center so so that's keeps on happening uh, you know regularly and uh, what we are foreseeing as uh, dr imtiaz said from the csr perspective uh, three four things uh, this particular uh, you know the activity of uh, the this issue is in india now it's uh, people from all sections of society are now uh, you know slowly uh, able to understand what this is going to be uh, this particularly the issue of uh, elderly care and so even corporates are now um, listening to these issues uh, otherwise in corporate uh, world uh, convincing the whole uh, you know the system on any such issues where actually the businesses will naturally focus on making profits and uh, the social issues for the decision makers become secondary sometimes but now in this scenario where the law is there uh, so the compliances are there and corporates are now if i compare from 2014 in 2022 corporates are also exchanging ideas on the social aspect ready to listen uh, they are open to uh, ideas so so that change is now visible in the corporate world as well and uh, uh, and this particular generation where we are now uh, where we have the people from uh, you know early 50s 60s and uh, the people who are born after 2000 and so three four kind of generations uh, where we have together and if this after 10 years or after 15 years the scenario will be different people going to a, a day care center or a old age home will not be a stigma it will become a practice uh, because nobody will be there at homes to take care so so it is slowly it will the stigma will go off uh, gradually and today it's a question of dignity for elderly as well as for their children to send if if i send my my parents to a old age home uh, mm -hmm. in our indian uh, society we always think of not my convenience but what my neighbors will say what my yeah. friends will say he has sent my father to old age home yeah. so so we are in the in this era where we have carrying this stigma knowingly and unknowingly and uh, you know this will slowly once the next generation comes uh, this stigma will go off we will happily go to the you know old age home and and will not be having such kind of yeah, stigma we are in the transformation <laughs> so so that will also come and uh, uh, um, uh, dr imtiaz you had an interesting uh, question to me on uh, uh, on csr aspect having day care centers by the corporates 
what my feeling i i have not uh, kind of a full proof experiment or anything uh, uh, in no, 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 no. on that uh, you know uh, this has to not only csr driven uh, it has uh, multiple angles actually hr uh, like uh, corporates are having crutches for the kids uh, the women employees having the small kids can come with the, their kids and have the uh, kids there for uh, day care similarly the corporates can have the, uh, the day care centers for the employees and uh, uh, you know where the employee having the dependent parents who need assistive care and other uh, facilities uh, can be there and it can be a talent retention strategy for the corporate uh, you know where you feel that you know i, I beside my needs Uh, it's a family need to be taken care so so it has to move from csr and you know take the hr perspective together they can be built in uh, by the corporates operated by the corporates but their uh, operational expenses cannot be treated in csr in the mandatory csr because it will be a matter of uh, benefit for the employee yeah. which is not permissible under the law no but another aspect of this like many many uh, uh, you know the industries having the townships uh, who where they have the families residing in the townships again can be a, a intervention for the corporate where they have the old age home for the retired employees and certain products can be designed like you know you have the pf is deducted from your salary then certain portion goes into your pension account similarly as, as some voluntary kind of contribution the employee can choose from the very beginning can go that you know i will have a ensured retirement home a safe secured age friendly and you know i can uh, you know uh, even stay there and my all needs will be fulfilled and those retirement homes if employee choose to opt they can go and stay there and if they don't choose they can take the money back so so those kind of models corporate you know can be tried in the corporate world which will uh, you know have a very good uh, impact on the hr side uh, on the talent acquisition and retention and also it will fulfill the social need emerging social need so so those are my uh, you know some of the thoughts uh, which uh, i felt to share on this forum and we are not actually the experts uh, we work with the uh, helpers only on this issue but what we have taken learning from this particular project now we are having a, a document uh, our strategy program strategy for 2030 where we have taken two aspects as cross cutting uh, one is naturally uh, a women focus programming uh, so and second is on uh, elderly care so we are looking all our programs from the elderly care uh, lens whether we have the inclusion in all our programs for elderly or not if not then how do we make them more inclusive so that's how we are trying to move in this direction and um, uh, thank you very much for this opportunity and uh, learning from uh, you know the great experiences a uh, jamtara experience very nice i think we can uh, uh, definitely look into that at uh, rural uh, aspects of uh, rural programs of our uh, foundation and uh, even from uh, kerala is always uh, i know always a model thing which we need to look into and then we can have certain learnings and take it in our programs so thanks a lot intias for giving this opportunity thank you rajesh ji always a pleasure to listen to you <laughs> very humble and uh, always down to earth despite the position that you hold uh, so uh, just you know few questions that has come in the inbox maybe we'll try to um, so one of the thing one of the attendee is trying to ask this question to any of the panelists if they would like to answer that uh, mm -hmm. uh, on, can anyone talk about intervention that bring together different generation with specific needs and thus enabling a wholesome fulfilling experience for everyone for example elderly club 
centers collaboration with orphanages or rehabilitation centers for women and youth. How do I raise my hand here? Can I answer, Imtiaz? Yeah, yeah, please, Nilamji. Yeah, okay. So I I think um, if we uh, if we have a healthy influx of young people, the intergenerational bonding will come. And so, um, I mean, we have everyone here, every week we have about 15, 20 young people coming. And you always get young volunteers who come in and who we, many of them have come here also. So I think any kind of intergenerational bonding will happen if we have something interesting happening for the young people also. Now they come because I give them a free hand. They can paint anything. They can uh, make anything they want to. They can create what they want to. They have space to work, you know, do something. Um, they worked on China and pottery this time when they came. So we had an influx of people from the design studio who had come in. So if we engage them in an interesting manner, they will come. So that is, you know, intergeneration bonding will happen always. Uh, some schools also have this program when they start uh, uh, the outreach program, uh, you know, from class five onwards. And one of the agendas is coming to Panchwati or to any other elder care home. I know they come to Panchwati. It's in their agenda to come here. So we have little small, small children who become big, big children, you know, who are coming from different schools. So, you know, if you encourage it, if you engage with them, and if you talk to them, and if they, you know, they need to be talked to as much as old people need to be talked to. So if you participate, the, the generational bonding happens automatically. Sure. Thank you, Neelamji. Uh, Rajesh ji, uh, you know, listening to you again, uh, you know, we did this small experiment with Tata Trust in Bhubaneswar, where we had a, a very urban centric, uh, middle class affluent center that we set up with the government of Odisha. And you see, you see one of the questions that our state Bharti has, uh, the observation that Bharti has put in the Q&A, uh, it is actually emanating from that. In that, we saw a lot of these people who are either retired principals, bankers, doctors, they wanted to do something for the community. So as a result, what we did was we, 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 we engaged them in some you know, slum outreach program where they could, you know, slum children used to come to the center, they used to give them some tuition, um, and they would go to the slum and do some, you know, health camps and things like that. So we did that experiment for almost one, one and a half years to close to two years. So there was some bit of experience from there. And also our recent study that HelpAge did this year uh, actually showed a lot of the elderly are willing to work. They're looking out for a second innings. And, but there are no, no, not much of an avenue which is available to them for them to be engaging in that second innings and not much of the corporate, not much of the, uh, you know, employment agency would take them and give them a shot at second innings. So my question to both you and, you know, followed by Ashish is, uh, how do you see this big, uh, you know, uh, potential getting tapped? You know, these are people who come with wealth of experience, you know, 35 years, 40 years, you know, golden experiences with them, with insights and practical, uh, you know, um, handle on things, which is much better than anyone else. So how do you think that, uh, how do we take this as an opportunity and utilize its potential? Brajesh, uh, to you and then... Yeah, uh, uh, Dr. Imtiaz, it's a very interesting thing and uh, and lot many corporates uh, uh, always need, you know, advisory services, uh, consultancy services, which are kind of assignment based. And uh, what is required, I feel, is uh, a, a bridging mechanism. You know, uh, some applications, some app, if, if some technological interventions can come in and uh, some app based, uh, you know, thing can come, where the uh, corporates and other organizations can, uh, you know, provide those uh, platforms. And uh, people can register, the retired people can register their, your, their small profile, what is their expertise and experience. And uh, those apps can have, you know, that kind of facility where uh, uh, people can see uh, if I need somebody on certain aspect and I can go to that app and, uh, you know, just put my requirement and can get the, um, uh, the person connected. I, I, that comes to immediately to my mind uh, and 
because it's a gap of only connecting it's a bridging uh, gap uh, that's the thing because every organization every corporate uh, have those kind of requirements it's there sure thank you bijay ji ashish your take on the thing okay. yeah, sure no, i think I'm, i would agree with uh, you said that you know the real uh, i don't understand the sides i think the idea is what will make this bridge work right and uh, you know rajiv dubey who's my colleague in uh, in this work and you know we often often go back to a little bit of design thinking and say look we have to and say look why is it your elderly for example do they not know about opportunities do they not know you know what they can do uh, do companies not people who may have expertise that they can you know uh, uh, be used for so i think the challenge here at least in our work is or our finding is that it's not discovery right uh, and solutions about discovery solve only partly for it uh, the real if you if you think about it why is it that people despite knowing that they can contribute don't contribute you know we know that seniors enjoy a lot when they are in the company of young people right and schools offer a great opportunity for them to go there and the children and you know children also get inspired potentially by uh, you know which many of them otherwise would miss but it still doesn't happen right uh, i think the the challenge here is often times i mean you know about things like mobility is like making it easy for them to do so the solution has to be built around in a way the 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 limitations or the the uh, the, the 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 challenges that elderly face so for example we 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 looked at, and you know in the, we did quite a few in, in the work that we do and we found out that like young person are not that prepared to end to end responsibility If they are then they would be in a full time job anyway right so how do you so in it for us to break down the work into parts which are you know bite sized or uh, right sized for them to work given whatever their limitations are right so it requires a bit of more thinking to make the work also uh, you know uh, suitable for for them to do thank you ashish uh we've come to the uh, very end uh, with the last speaker and as, as in uh, you know events like this they say you save the best for the last so we have our <laughs> state head rajesh uh, here with us rajesh had had the opportunity and a phenomenal achievement of uh, implementing close to 15 uh, you know day care center multi activity day care center in the state of himachal and that through with nhm and you know department of social justice funding uh, which is a great achievement in itself and he has been running it for some years now so rajesh uh, over to you to share these experiences and has been your thank you, uh, thank you jias i think you know the last speaker whether advantage or disadvantage because you know most of things already have been you know discussed but i just wanted to make you fresh can i share one video is just one minute video then we'll have some few discussion actually sure sure so with right. permission of intias i would like to share one yes. really, you know small video Can you see it? Yes, Rajesh. Okay.
thank you thank you very much okay yes um, i think you know most of the i think you know what, what uh, the problems need have already been discussed uh, today because you know we are discussing about daycare centers multi purpose daycare centers i would i would take in some very different way actually you know i just wanted to share my experience i think around few years back i think it is it was in 2008 9 because i am just you know talking about in advocacy manner because you know i have been working with helpage for last around uh, 18 20 years so we have also transformed from you know welfare to development to right based organization so in 2008 uh, and you know i came to shimla then uh, you know i prepared i did some homework then i had meeting with minister social justice and empowerment himachal pradesh i went to minister and uh, I, I said that ma'am, what kind of programs? What are the you know what, what kind of programs? What you know schemes or policies do do you have in our state? Then she called uh, Secretary Social Justice, and uh, you know what she said is, you know we are giving uh, old age pension of rupees four hundred and fifty rupees per month to elderly. So I said, madam, are you sure? Because is it good enough to you know survive our elderly? I said. You know, then I have used some political words. I said, ma'am, we have 10% of elderly, uh, you know, voters. We have 10% of elderly voters. And, you know, with, with their family members and state is providing just old age pension of rupees 450 to elderly in our state. I don't think so it is good, good enough. Then I said, you know, do we have state policy for older person? Do we have any other programs for the older person? They don't have. Then they call secretary, and I think it took around you know uh, four or five years to have a state policy for older person. We had number of meetings, we organized some conferences and you know workshops to I think advo to advocate government. It took around four years to have state policy for older person. That was our first achievement as far as you know policy level is concerned. Once the policy state would have policy. Then state could have, you know, different, they can have budget for our senior citizens, our elders. Then from then we have started, you know, programs on uh, elderly program uh, for elderly in our state. Then, then different, you know, uh, as far as Himachal is concerned, then, you know, we have to, uh, we just try to understand the problems, you know. In Himachal, we have around uh, 7 lakh elderly. So, around more than 90% elderly they are living in the rural areas and around 10% they are uh, living in the urban areas then they have different problems rural elderly have different problems Other urban elders has different problems they have different needs so as far as rural you know uh, elderly are concerned we have started different programs healthcare programs you know we have started livelihood programs but for urban and semi urban uh, you know elderly so it was very important to work with actually with the government you know because for because it is not only responsibility of you know civil society or the family or or the other community we thought that you know government should come forward and you know they should come forward and they should make some specific budget or schemes or programs to the our elder uh, to the uh, to our urban and semi urban elders so concept of this you know multi purpose age care uh, center started around 10 years back in our state then uh, in 2000, I think 11, uh, 12, 13, uh, with you know our you know regular intervention with the government, we have uh, you know started uh, the integrated program for older person in the state, where we kept you know uh, daycare center model that you know we we started focusing on daycare center model. So after then, uh, government has kept some budget because. Uh, if you have been to Shimla, because uh, if you see, I was you know, always, you know, feel very, very sad and bad, you know, whenever you go to the market, especially in the mall Shimla, our elders, mostly retirees, they used to you know, roam around, they don't have, you know, particular space or place where they can have a uh, dignity to live with, you know, they can talk, they can, they were just roaming around, you know, it is not like, you know, like, you know, uh, cows when they start, then when they stop feeding, you know, we used to throw them, they, they, you know, they roam around, it is not elders. So I just, you know, had discussion with the government, with the Ministry of Social Justice and uh, Ministry of Health to have, you know, spaces, places where we can have special model where, where our, you know, elders can have a very dignified life. Then we, we have created one model, which I would like to share that model.
Is it visible? Hello? Not clear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then we uh, start, we have with, along with uh, you know, Ministry of Social Justice and uh, Ministry of Health, especially with the National Health Mission, we have we have created one model, which initially we have started with AHK Service Center Hub, where under one roof, we can provide, you know, uh, 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 services like physio care, you know, we can provide services like library, we can provide services like recreation, tea coffee corner, and you know regular health checkup and uh, and computer facility and helpline also so this model uh, we worked with the government they have adopted it and we made special budget for this program and now this uh, you know uh, this uh, uh, portal has been adopted by the government both by social justice and empowerment and the ministry of health and nhm now i think around 35 daycare centers are being you know operating across the state so what I feel is that in you know, a state like Himachal, because we have very really small uh, urban and semi-urban areas where you know elderly actually need such kind of centers, and uh, I think we are multiplying these centers across the state. And I would strongly recommend it is not only in Himachal we should have such kind of you know multi-purpose daycare centers across the country. I think that is actually need of the hour because you know by 2050 India is going to have around 340 million elderly. So are we prepared for that? Because I know many elderly people, those who have those those where those, those where those who are very rich, but nobody is looking after them, and they always call us. Sir, we would like to come, and we need some particular some space where we can come. We can organize some you know kind of birthday celebration. We can have kind of chatting. We can play you know some carrom board. So this such kind of you know daycare. Uh, concept or daycare model is required across the country and I'm strongly recommending, but I would also recommend that we have to work closely with the government, you know, we have to advocate the, uh, whether it is central government or the state government so that it, these programs can be replicated across the country. Because it is not possible only to the civil society to run this, uh, because these units for the sustainability also because we have different models, because in urban areas, I, we have seen that, you know, uh, even uh, uh, you know, members are retired IS officers, retired doctors. They probably come and they sit there, they play games. So it is not the matter of sustainability. But I would always, you know, uh, I would always emphasize to advocate and to work closely with the government to multiply this program across the country. So I think that is very important because you know, because it is not only uh, welfare program; it is right based. You know, we have to work for the rights and entitlement to elderly. So we have to work with the government. We have to advocate the government so that it is responsibility of the government also. And I'm very happy that uh, Himachal state government is very proactive. You know, whenever I approach them, you know, whenever we have uh, kind of, you know, some proposal regarding some new programs, government has accepted that and they have put part of their policy actually. So I'm hoping that, you know, other states like Kerala, Kerala, I have been in Kerala last, uh, you know, last month, I think I visited Kerala, the way, you know, that local, local self-governance -govern is working. And I'm hoping that our state is going to be an age-friendly state after four or five years, because I'm sure that, you know, government is very proactive. They are accepting us because I am part of, you know, their uh, different, uh, a member of their different programs. So we are hoping to have such kind of programs across the state and as well as across the country. So my emphasis is more on advocacy so that we have to advocate for the elderly. That is very, very important. Thank you, Rajesh. We've almost come to the end of the webinar. I'll just try to briefly summarize and see how we can take it forward. So great discussion, I think, from the very first uh, you know, this, uh, deliberation by Camellia where you know, the community participation and engagement with policymaker is what came up very strongly. That is the way that we should take up for if we are looking at scaling this up. Administrative will is very necessary, uh, you know, specifically at a unit level, which is at a district level for somebody, you know, for this kind of initiative to be getting driven from Jamtara experience we saw. 
Kerala has got very best case, good case studies and experiments with the program that they're doing, which they will ultimately scale up in their state. But that is something that all of us can learn and take it and along with state government, you know, advocate for their scale up. Uh, business model principle for scaling up is something that Ashish showed us how it is to be done. Uh, corporates are interested, but we, they need good models. Uh, Rajesh Gupta told us, you know, for impact, we should be able to, you know, uh, scale up and show good models. Uh, uh, you know, free of cost for elderly is what, you know, listen to your heart is what Nilamji said. Uh, so thankful to everyone. I think, uh, you know, our task is cut out. You know, there is a policy level implication. There is, there, is, there are, there are schemes which is already there. We need to action it. We need to show results. We need to do pilots quickly and kind of scale it up to and see the scale up of this model across the country. I'll quickly, you uh, know, uh, as I started the session, I would like to end the session with a small share of Rahat Indori. I'll send you the translation, Camilla, later. Aakho me paani rakho, hoto pe chingari rakho. Zinda rehna hai to tarki be bohat sari rakho. Raha ke patthar se badkar kuch nahi hai manzilein. Raste awaz deete hain safar jari rakho. Thank you Very so much. Very nice. Thank you, madam. Thank you so much, everyone, for coming. Thank you, Viju, Rajesh. Okay, thank, you. Media. thank you, everyone. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Vishnu, for your support. Ashish said to leave 10 minutes early, so uh, we'll... I, I just... Can I, Imtiaz, can I just say something to Rajesh? Yes. I just yes. had a visitor just now who, who was asking me, somebody is asking her to open daycare centers in Gurgaon. And she says, you know, I have been to the help aid center in Shimla and it is so nice. I spent three hours over there. So, yes. Rajesh, that is for you. Congratulations. Um, we, we just talked about you today and you're here you are. So oh, thank you. It's thank you. Wonderful yeah. to hear. Yeah. Thanks, sir. And please welcome to you also. You also come and visit here. Yes, surely. <laughs> yeah. 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 Thank you. Thanks thank a lot. You. Thanks to all our panelists. Thanks to all our attendees. We had 163 at one point of time, 150 remain throughout. So we are very thankful to all our uh, attendees and audience. Thank you very much. Thank you. And thanks to Vishnu. Thank you, last but not the thank least. You. The, all the stuff. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank, Thank you. you. Let's bring us together. Bye.